We're now joined by Caitlin Connors, Southern Regional Director for the Susan B. Anthony Pro-Life America Organization. Good to see you, Caitlin. Hey, thank you so much, Steve. I appreciate the opportunity. Um, thank you. Let me ask you, you've been quoted as saying that uh, the Supreme Court decision on Roe versus Wade is uh, not the end, but quote, just the beginning. What do you mean by that? Yeah, absolutely. Well, it's hard to overstate um, what the Dobbs decision has done for the pro-life movement. So for the past 50 years, the pro-life movement has been working to enact pro-life legislation that will save lives. And because of Roe versus Wade, um, decided by judges, unelected judges in 1973, um, none of those laws were hardly ever able to go into effect and to save those lives. So essentially the will of the people was um, not uh, upheld. And so now with the Dobbs decision, um, states are now able through the democratic process, the people who elect their representation to go to their state houses and pass pro-life legislation um, that will save lives and promote well-being of mothers as well um, and into law in their states. And so you're right, the movement now just really gets its beginning. For the last 50 years, the effort has been to try to save as many lives as we can along the way. Um, and now that we're able in many states to do that, uh, now the goal of the movement, well, has always been the goal of the movement, but also now um, in a more tangible way, we're able to really get the work done of this movement, which is to love both mom and baby, to support um, both mothers and uh, as they are facing unplanned pregnancies and giving them authentic choice for life. So the heart of this movement has always been about empowering women. And now we are finally able to get to that point where that work can truly begin. And so you, I want to understand something. Um, protecting women, protecting, how about protecting girls? For those who question, which there is no longer any questioning, that there, was a ten, there is a 10-year-old girl in Ohio who was raped by a 29-year-old man. She was pregnant for six weeks and three days. And in the state of Ohio, she was three days over the limit of being able to have a legal abortion. More than 50 states will likely even outlaw that. This 10-year-old girl who was raped by a 29-year-old man had to go to Indiana to get a legal abortion. What should have happened in a case like that? First off, it has to be said that rape, um, any sexual violence is abhorrent and should be prosecuted to the fullest extent of the law. Um, so that perpetrator should be behind bars for the rest of his life, as far as I'm concerned. Um, and I think as a society, we should really be focusing on that crime um, and how we need to be protecting women and girls um, in this horrific situation of this 10 year old girl um, from perpetrators like that. Unfortunately, okay, well, I hear one second, less- One second, but once, one second, once it happens- Right. What should have been afforded to her and her in terms of protecting her, a 10-year-old girl raped by a 29-year-old violent criminal. If you had your way and you were in control of the laws around abortion, would she have not have been able to go to any other state and get an abortion? Well, I'm not in charge of the laws. Lawmakers are. Um, and so in some states, there are exceptions for rape and incest. In some states- You believe there should be an exception for rape and incest? Um, I personally believe that all life is sacred. I believe that abortion is not an answer. It does not solve problems. It only continues problems. It actually hurts women. Um, I believe that abortion only compounds the uh, trauma that women face in these horrific situations. So no, I, I personally believe that all life is sacred. I also believe, though, we should be asking questions towards the other extreme, which is uh, the Democrat Party's platform of abortion throughout all nine months of pregnancy, taxpayer funded. Um, this is a horrific situation that we're talking about here. I don't take it lightly. Um, I unfortunately know people who have been um, victims uh, of sexual assault. Um, and so I... Uh, and so very, my heart goes out in the situation. I don't believe abortion helps her situation. It doesn't um, take that the crime away girl. from her. Tender girl, should she have been forced in your view, forget about making laws, but as a, as a leader in this field and as a woman, do you believe that that 10 year old girl who was raped should have had to carry that fetus to term? So I believe again, 
all life is sacred. I don't believe that uh, that deter- that terminating the life of her child, um, even though the the situations around it were horrific, um, yep. the punishing that child for sins of another person or for the crimes of another person um, is not justice. I'm not in any way undermining the uh, horrific situation no, that I it know. is. No, you're not. Clearly, you're not. Clearly, you're not doing that. And I appreciate that. But one more quick question on government control. Uh, Many of the folks in the pro-life movement, I'm not saying this is you, but many of them argued against government mandates around COVID, around vaccines, government mandate, around masks, government mandate. But in this case, it would be a government mandate that that young girl, that 10-year-old girl or any woman, regardless of rape, incest or whatever the situation is, that the government is saying, not your body, your choice, your body, our choice. Is that a fair assessment? Um, I I know. I don't think it's quite fair. Uh, One, we are a one-issue organization. We focus on life and protecting life. So no, we don't have any sort of stance on um, COVID protocols. Um, But to your point, um, when we're talking about Uh, abortion, we are talking about two lives. We are talking about two bodies. The government's primary function is to protect life. Um, And so therefore, we believe strongly um, that it is the government's role in order to help protect those lives. And so at the state level now, through the Dobbs decision, states will finally be able to enact those laws and not have a chokehold over um, a decision made in 1973 based on very outdated science by unelected judges um, who were mandated mandating law for all 50 states. Um, Now the people's voice will be heard on their stance on abortion policy and can be enacted in those states. I do want to thank you, Caitlin, for joining us. We appreciate it and wish you all the best. All right. Thank you so much. Think Tank with Steve Adubato has been a production of the Caucus Educational Corporation. Funding has been provided by Atlantic Health System, Rutgers University, Newark, Community Food Bank of New Jersey, MD Advantage Insurance Company, Summit Health, the New Jersey Economic Development Authority, Horizon Blue Cross Blue Shield of New Jersey, Robert Wood Johnson Foundation, and by Wells Fargo. Promotional support provided by NJ.com and by Insider NJ. The Community Food Bank of New Jersey, the state's largest anti-hunger, anti-poverty nonprofit, together with our 800 plus partners, delivers food, help, and hope to the hundreds of thousands of neighbors in need who are struggling with hunger right now. The Community Food Bank of New Jersey. Food is here. Help is here. Hope is here. Join us. Go to cfbnj.org now.